Good morning. Bonjour. Guten Morgen. Buongiorno. Und sehr. Und so weiter. And so on. Um, this is actually a uh, session that we we prepared with uh, Jose. And we're going to be talking about multilingual Google solutions and how we can solve specific use cases uh, with the modules that we have at our disposition. So, okay. Uh, quick introduction. Hello, I'm Florian Wallerton. I'm one of the co founders of uh, Windows House. I'm based in Germany and we have a group of expertise for the, the European market. Also, uh, we have a, a hashtag for the internationalization conversation going on here at DrupalCon, DCI18N. So if you have questions, if you have feedback, that you want to give us now during the presentation or any time during the conference, just use the hashtag on Twitter. Before we get started, and well, before we get into the, the, the details, the implementation, and all that, one thing that's important to ask for some is why are we doing it? So, why are multilingual solutions so important? Well, the goal of every website is to actually reach a certain audience, and we need to match the reality of that audience. So, if we have a uh, a website that's targeting in the country that has two languages, the website should have these two languages. If we have an international website that has many languages spread across different countries, we need to match the audience um, with, the, with the structure of our, of our website. And one of the questions that comes up pretty often is, well, can't, why can't we just make one website for every language? And then, well, it's, it's more expensive, and it's getting consistent, uh, sometimes it's just not getting so feasible. So I'm not going to spend too much time trying to convince you that multilingual validity or multilingual websites are important because, well, if nobody cares, you wouldn't be here. So, uh, because if you're here, you want to build multilingual websites. But building multilingual websites is not that easy. And what we want to focus on today is finding solutions. Um, but why are the solutions so difficult? Well, we're building websites with Drupal. Drupal does a lot of things great, a lot of things are maybe not so great. But Drupal is not responsible for all the issues that we have with not having a website. Yeah, kind of interesting. One of the main problems with multilingual websites is that that multilingualty is a big part of the business logic. And because every website is different, with every website has different business logic, it means that every case is different. So we can't, it, it is very difficult to build one generic multilingual solution that just works for every website. And so what we have is not one generic solution, we have different components that we need to combine to fulfill that very specific case. And our aspect of this multilingualism is difficult. It's that it's not only a module that you can turn on that affects a specific part of the website. It's really an integral part of the whole of the whole website. It affects the way content is stored, the way it's created, it affects workflows, it affects how things are listed. It, it's really a, a, fun, a well, kind of functionality that affects everything in the website. Another of the problems is that languages work in different ways. And when we are trying to match, we make a match between languages, well, translation, that by itself is already compromised because, well, languages work differently. For example, uh, this joke a guy walked into a bar, and yeah, I don't know, I mean, uh, tried to tell a joke in any other language but English, just doesn't work. Not much. Maybe a more relevant example. Not long ago, we made a cooking website, and they had categories for cooking and baking. So in English, it seems to be very clear. They had those same categories in French, but it didn't work because that's cuisine, and this is cuisine. 
And there's, there's many languages where it's just the same thing, it's not made at all. And so we can't match everything from one language to another, which kind of leads to uh, uh, problematic uh, structures. And finally, multi multi-line websites are difficult because I um, just need to create a lot more content. And creating content is a tedious task, and if you have many languages, it means that you need to find people to create that content in those languages. It's a lot of work. Even before any company is anchored on the website, just doing the translation part is something that requires a big investment from the time. So it's something that you need to keep in mind, and that we need to warn the clients too. Well, if you want to know something about it, are you ready to do what it takes? To just create a We're going to look at some use cases, but before just a couple of concepts, make sure that we're in the same that we know what we're talking about. First step is localization. So, localization is just attaching the uh, place to something. Uh, it means that in, in our case, we, we care about the language. And Google, out of the box, has one. Localization when it comes to language, it's just American English. Yes. Since we're here in the UK, we can just make the localization with an S. Uh, that's, that's already just turning the Z into an S. That's localization. Um, so it's just executing a language with, with our website, with our content, like French, for example. Translation is the second step. It's when you have more than one language. For example, you have French and German, and you want to establish a relationship between the, the two different versions of the content. Language negotiation is when you have a user that loads a page. You want to figure out in what language to that page you're in. So this, this is actually something that was much easier in Drupal 7 than in English previously. The new system really gives you a lot of flexibility. It can be based on the browser language, it can be based on the URL, on the user account settings, um, and you can really set the priority of these, these different aspects. It's something that works really well. And once you have a language associated to, to your page, the page is loaded, then you need to figure out, well, how can you display the content? If you might have content in different languages, sometimes you just want to display one language. Sometimes you want to display one language or the original language that was created. Maybe you want to display everything. So there's, there's many new cases that each make sense for, for one of those combinations. Something to, to keep in mind. And it's not always the same for every part of the website. So you can mix and match with those different combinations and you know, different possibilities. And this is something that to keep in mind well, you know, it takes a lot of, it, it takes some time to do just to the time and figure out what exactly it is that you want. Because multilingual language can, can mean a lot of different things. Translation sets is just the association of a different, well, two different pieces of content in different languages. They say, well, these two things are actually referring to the same thing, they're just in different languages. This is something that's very important uh, in the way that Drupal translates it. It's not that only content. And then content translation workflow is really, well, what the, um, it, it, it's the process of creating the multilingual content. When you only have one language, creating a new page, it's a one step process. You just fill out a form of them. When you have more than one language, you need to have many versions of one for each language. Then you automatically have a workflow. You just create one language, then translate it, or you create separate parts to assist them. So it's, well, it's a more complex workflow. I don't have a picture for that. But, yeah. So it's, that, that's one of the things that, uh, that we need to take into account. So now we're going to take a look at a very uh, at a basic use case, and I'm going to let Jose talk about this. Uh, I'm Jose Guerrero. I started 
this uh, in a module some years ago just to build this a multilingual blog because I just wanted to have my Drupal blog in English and Spanish. So this is uh, the first story and uh, one of the simple cases we can we can uh, work on. Uh, the idea of this is uh, we have basically uh, one side with content in two languages and we need uh, to somehow make it fit and link it together. So it should be a very, very simple website. Just a blog with two languages. Uh, we can have posts that we want to have translated. We might want uh, uh, other posts that we don't need uh, to translate. Uh, we have some uh, simple taxonomy. We have some simple listings that just uh, display the content on the uh, current text language. And we have a simple language selector with items. Uh, so, basically, this is a simple block. Looks like this. Uh, this is the Drupal 6 one still not updated to turn, but <laughs> will be done soon. Uh, so, this is the block in English. In Spanish, so basically, you have some content that is translated to the languages, you have some other content like blog posts that is not, and you have to somehow uh, link it together and make it browsable. Uh, uh, the first condition is this there's one single user that is type and name that is content writer that is translator, so we have one uh, list. Because if you see with some of those things, so that, that me, the admin, the later, everything. So I just want to put content into languages, makes as simple as possible. Uh, we don't even have a uh, workflow here. Like uh, today, I uh, post this page in English, and then maybe I translate it for next month or not, or maybe I write it. This blog, blog post in Spanish, but I don't need to translate it to English because it is for a different audience. Uh, so the idea is to need the simplicity and maximum flexibility. Uh, the first thing you want to translate are um, the name, and these are variables. So we have this uh, simple interface which is handy. Always, when the site administrator is the translator too, but maybe not in other cases. Uh, you can see that uh, uh, message at the top. It says like uh, this: there are multilingual variables here. You can switch from English to Spanish and write them in every language. So this is pretty simple. And then we need to say the simplest. Content translation that I need. We have these uh, semi specific pages that are for uh, my, my work, and that is usually translated, but maybe not. Then I have the blog post that uh, they say they're, they're mostly not translated because they're usually for different audiences, so like uh, in Spanish for people in Spain or other local issues, and you write in English about the publicity. Um, at the end of the simple content selection, I mentioned that's uh, how we call it content selection when uh, you decide which uh, content you display in a space to depend on the language. So a good page translation looks like this, which should, should be pretty simple. Uh, we have English, Spanish version, we can click on edit or translate to any language, or we can uh, select. Select below which uh, content is the translation of this page. This is Drupal Core. Drupal Core Content Translation Module. It's just uh, simple and better. Uh, and it is also very flexible. The other thing is a uh, very, very flexible structure and uh, navigation. So if I my post uh, something in English today, I can my translate. I might not translate. So, uh, uh, 
you want to have this uh, very, very simple experiment on which terms may be translated, if they may translate them. And we have these content listings that are what we can by term and language. So this is, this is basically the about the domain of listing and then content listings become the main term. Uh, for many, the simplest strategy is having one many privileges. So it's, uh, they might be under the same, but different, but they have one of the language, and then when you switch from English to Spanish, you get a different menu that are mostly the same, but uh, only have this place uh, here in English that is not the same Spanish. So this gives me more flexibility. Uh, then about uh, the population taxonomy terms, this is a final module. Having this option here about the population mode of vocabulary. So I select this database and then uh, I can translate any term if it needs translation because there are some terms that don't even need translation like a group of I need to translate the description maybe. So this is basically the same term is used for both languages. It goes up in English or Spanish depending on the language you're browsing in. Uh, this will be the simple translation in the first term. Not in half, but simply the edit and translate options, which is ideal if you are the content creator and the translator too. Um, then, any the translation you write as simple as possible. The idea is any good app to be able to create, edit, and display content on the same page or as close as possible. So this is a very, very simple case. Uh, this would be like uh, similar to the customer translation for uh, translating a content category. And uh, basically the same, we have the edit and I have the translate options on the same page, then I click on translate, then I click the language, and that's it. Uh, the next thing here would be to have some store profile for this because it's a very simple, simple use case and uh, many people might just want to do more blog and want to work with more less than options and that. And um, yeah, we are working on that. Uh, this is mostly a placeholder now, but uh, I hope it will grow to um, some simple store profile for this. Uh, now we want to see a different story. It's the analysis case with a different strategy. And this is the story. Okay, so the, the second use case is actually another simple example. It's a pretty common one, just a brochure website. So no user generated content. And one of the things that is special about this kind of stuff is that everything is translated. Um, actually, this is a picture from Jose. Um, yeah, the Rosetta Stone. Maybe someday in the future, after we just look at the website to try to understand the language, and um, it would be interesting. Uh, but yeah, so the idea is that you have exactly the same content in every language. And so we need to have to make a pair of structure for, for everything. So just for for the show these websites, you can see some money. So this is the Honda Craft homepage. As you can see, we also have their uh, language switcher. The difference is that every single page is translated in English and in German. So there's really a 100% match there. The, the way that the content is configured, it's also just enabled with uh, well, not only the support with translation, it's actually the same kind of setup that Jose has on his blog. The difference is just the way we work with it, that we really translate that same page. So, well, that, that's the way we use it. The module by itself doesn't force us to translate that same page. Um, Um, yeah, one, one of the, the things that 
every, every part of the website is different. And the one thing is that one common mistake is to think that anything that's language related has to do with the, with the configuration. So, for example, for training space, well, we have training in German and in English, but we want to display all the terms because a person who speaks German, who goes to websites, displays the page in German, they must still be interested in English training. So, the, the first thing that I thought was, well, well, this is just as a speech and a language application with each one of our training. It turns out that this is not the right way to go about it. Because the language that we want to refer to is actually a content of, of, our, of, our, of our node. So it's, it's actually, uh, well, it, it, what, what we need to, to have is to have content that's language independent and that just says, well, this training will be offered in German, this training will be offered in English. But it's important not to confuse the language that's being referred to and the language of the content itself. And we're going to now look at a third use case, more complex, and because it's going to be talking about that. Okay, so we think these two simple use cases that anyone else can do, I think most of the multi websites are done. Now we are going to talk about uh, not a website, this is a hypothetical one, an idea for uh, uh, how could a uh, multilingual translation community for documentation be built and how could it work? Uh, think, for instance, of a website for having Drupal uh, documentation in all the languages you can have. So this, is, this would be a translation community, and as I say, it's an idea for now. Uh, the picture we need here is uh, basically we are focusing on having documentation translated, and everything else will be to help that. So we might have some uh, multilingual forum, and we will need some uh, staff in, in different languages. Uh, we might need a uh, workflow, teams. Uh, in this case, when you have uh, many languages, and uh, this website would very well have a uh, website that you handle the languages, uh, you will need people to handle each language because no one there will understand everything. Uh, so, these are mostly the things we're having. And when you think about people that writing content to different analysis. This might look up like this. This is a multilingual scholar, but uh, we need to give it some structure so people can navigate and find a translation for this or see where this uh, it has this uh, documentation for this model of this language or how long of English or another language that they know. Um, so, for the multilingual handbook, which is our target here, uh, we need a lot of things, and mostly to handle uh, the translation workflow. Uh, that means uh, one needs translation, keeping track of the pages and updates, and then the translation, and then the text is finished for this language. And uh, we need to how to organize the, the translators that they uh, are some, uh, I mean, having a translation text around. Uh, we might have to run this uh, standard options for languages. This is how we call the option of uh, having a few languages for navigation, and then a few more languages for content. So we could have the navigation in all many languages, and we could have the content in 100 languages. Uh, there's this option, this is called standard language options. This is a I don't think I want to do the content type uh, uh, So basically, we will need the uh, uh, standard to handle this workflow. We need some, some strategy. We have content. Uh, we need some content with a translation. 
uh, we want to have a new tool that might be translated or not, depending on the wording of the reliability of the data. Remember, this is a community, so we don't have this uh, business approach of, okay, we have this content, now that I can do it as soon, and I guess that they will get it translated. This could be a lot of people writing and translating what they want or they can. And yeah, we need some help to handle these complex workflows. We uh, have this module that I can help you that uh, gives you some uh, uh, overview of the module stage about which content is translated to which language. Anyway, it will scale up to some point only because if you have 100 languages, this might not scale. And the bad news is we don't really have the tools to handle that complex workflow. Uh, then we also need some uh, language oriented translation UI that is uh, as opposed to the first case where the person writing the content and doing the same configuration was after the translator. So we want to have everything on the same page. Uh, here you have many people, many languages, so for the first one that translates to German, for instance, uh, then we want to have like a page for to see what needs translation to German. For the Spanish translators, we want to see what needs translation to Spanish. So this is a very different approach. Note the first one, translate, write, edit, everything on the same page. This is so what uh, needs translation for this language? Uh, this is basically the, the local model uh, which uh, can be used to with uh, item strings, the place of values for, for strings, you select a language and uh, see what needs translation. But uh, mostly I want to highlight the idea of this is a language oriented translation interface as opposed to an object oriented one which you have everything to translate something to every language in the same place. Then we need some strategy for taxonomy. You uh, might have some, uh, let's say, the names, uh, structural taxonomy or like uh, to create some menus or for time basic options. Uh, this two important ones you might want to have them translated to every language. So you might use local spellings because you tell like the, the functional ones because it's to go this way or this way. So this, this would be like a lo local instruction. Mm -hmm. This is just in the previous cases. But what about having different languages? Uh, the thing is, uh, we, uh, you cannot uh, have a time test because some people cannot get text to the content and you cannot uh, get that text and get it translated to 100 languages. So we need a different strategy here. And it's maybe a bit chaotic because it's uh, imagining thousands of people uh, having creating text in 100 languages. So first, you need to let them create them, and then you may need a second step of uh, if this guy created this stuff in uh, French, and this guy created this stuff in Spanish, and they are the same, we need to link them somehow. But they may be the same, but they may not be the same, this might need a translation. Yet, so the idea here is uh, people just create uh, terms with a language, and then we translate or link or, what, or whatever then. And this is the uh, uh, second option in multilingual taxonomy. Uh, I read the piece about not uh, being very readable this, but anyway, I will explain in the option. This is, this is just the uh, option that's the work on taxonomy uh, when you enable IAPN and uh, IAPN and taxonomy translation from what you uh, in this case, we, we have some uh, uh, translatable taxonomy. That means you post terms 
for any language, then you can link them together in what we call a translation set. So, uh, some of the places, so I can make some basically uh, terms below half a language. Then you can link the terms in translation set. And the good thing with the interface to do that is pretty simple. This is uh, you have a term, you click on the translate. This is not a localized term like when you translate the same term. You just link them together. So in this case, you could uh, select a term that matches for each language or create a new one. As you go, let's uh, take any one in this case. And this way you touch the translator with us. So people can just create this. And then if you're lucky, you have to interpret it in a two way. Then comes the multilingual problem. And this is uh, the question mark of how good a multilingual problem would look like. Uh, it doesn't make sense to mix comments in languages, so this guy uh, writes in uh, Portuguese, this guy uh, who understands uh, Portuguese and German, he writes in German, so the other guy should not uh, return anymore. This is not like uh, when you post a story, you want to mix comments in the language. But this is a form where we want to get to some form when people can talk. So, I think the best and maybe the only option here would be to have in one form per language. But anyway, we can have uh, as the form containers are uh, based on taxonomy, we can have them linked together, at least uh, the forms and the containers. Uh, then, some questions. Do we need an administrator for every language? Uh, will everybody speak a common language here? Uh, maybe yes, maybe not, but uh, we think of a group of people. Yes, everybody speaks English, and then maybe other languages. But if you think of a multilingual documentation site, it's not necessarily so, because some people might run in... Uh, I might have this, this Spanish handbook for this morning, because I have to... For a client, then I post it on the Spanish side, but uh, and I might speak Spanish and French, but not English. And then uh, someone else will have to translate it to a language, and then the users might not start a common language. So basically, we will need a lot of people helping to handle this. If you think of uh, Drupal documentation, it already takes a big team of people and a lot of work to have documentation organized in one language. So now think about what other the languages or well, only a few languages. It's much harder. And in the worst thing maybe the contemplation of flow. This is the simple case when you have a multiple language and a translation team. So you build, translate, publish, then source content gets updated, source content gets translated, and that's it. Then you have many source languages because people may post an uh, handbook documentation in many different languages. But, uh, well, you don't have many source languages, you, you have just mixed languages. And people is a community, so we cannot say, hey, that's the same thing. I want it for money. No, people will just will just translate it when they can. So this can be very very difficult to handle. It actually may end up like this. So we need to really think about the structure and how we do things before then. And then still it's the community, so they will have a say in whether they want to improve this German page but not the English version. We should allow that. This is really a complex hypothetical case, as I say. So we have more or less the tools to build that, but we will need a lot of work to do now. And then, 
this way, I'll see uh, this story, this three uh, sites. And then we're going to do some uh, breaking it down into pictures and values. Uh, so we are not going too much into detail, we are going to see just how to do it. Uh, it would be like uh, identifying, uh, I know you don't read that, I'm sorry, but uh, you don't need to read that. <laughs> it's the idea of how we are breaking it down. Uh, basically, we have uh, the left the picture, uh, we have uh, the top, the first four things are uh, use case one, two, and three, and then in yellow it could be your you case, because uh, you will want to build a multilingual site with specific pictures, and maybe similar to this, to where they are going to use the same and uh, at the top to the right, we have uh, modern names. After a local code, interesting description, interesting description views, entity translation. So, this is where I'm going to include the code with the but we are going to see how this can be mapped more or less. Anyway, the document will be available online, but uh, it's not like we have this reference to the code to use. It's like how we should go about building this child. It's like we first think about what we want, we think about the pictures we want. Like for the user interface, it will be mostly people for language cycling and calculation time. Then for the structure and taxonomy, it will be mostly uh, ITU. And then for content, you have a uh, collection of modules to get the pictures, and then there are the other single pictures that are provided by different modules. Uh, the module list is basically this, and on each of these modules, you will find other modules linked there. Okay, if you visit the ITM project page, there are like uh, 30 modules uh, linked from there. Uh, so, well, this is the basic list, but the idea is uh, if you want to build a multi website, you don't download it in the human digital space, so you can use the digital space for you. But the model is not even trying to be and just enable everything. To think about how you want your multilingual site to work, like it will be similar to maybe one of these use cases we presented before. Then you think about the pictures you need, then you think about the models. So select carefully your models to build your multilingual solution because that's how the model thing will help. Okay, and that's uh, pretty much what we have to say about this. Then at uh, uh, this session, there will be a both uh, at the first party. Uh, the first one is about the uh, multilingual problem, uh, uh, mostly uh, Drupal 8, planning for Drupal 8. And the second one will be um, mostly about the uh, module development. Uh, so uh, I will be there to talk with uh, people working in the manual or related modules. So, to see how can we make it better. And uh, that was it. Thank you for listening. And now, if you have any questions, So the, the question is, uh, how do we handle search on a multilingual site, right? Uh, well, depends. Uh, you might want some uh, filter by language, but uh, uh, we'll see that picture at the moment. Or also you might go the Google way and just when you search, 
your text as a language. So you might want to see content in different language, language that contains terms. So we really don't really have to like a, a way, this way to do that. But what is missing is just a, a language thing to understand. Actually, there it depends what kind of search infrastructure you're using. If you're using the built-in search, uh, I'm not sure if it's exactly how this one filters, uh, filters the content based on the, on the language. Um, I, I, I don't think it does. Not really uh, but one of the, the things that most people do when they have some, some search that's really supposed to, to get some meaningful results is to integrate with an external system like a Pixel Solar. Uh, using either the Apache Solar module or the Search API, and both of those that you index the, uh, well, the, the language actually as a, as a passive. And so you can use that to make sure that well, if, you're, if you're accessing the search page in German, then it's only going to result, uh, to give you the German result. If you're searching in English, it's only going to, uh, to give the English result. So you, you need to make sure that you have a filter that's that set in, in the, the way you generate your page. One of the problems is that different languages have different indexing requirements. So, for example, in German, you have very long words that just like are compound words. And so you want, you want to make sure that your index is set up correctly, that it detects those, uh, those languages. I don't know that there is, um, well, I know there, there's a multilingual search, a uh, particular search. Uh, module which helps with generating uh, in indexing uh, considerations for different languages. I don't know if it automatically handles to, well, to index different pieces of content depending, depending on the language. I, I don't even know if this is really possible. But it's true that certain and multilingual content is uh, it's, it's a bit of a challenge. I think this is what uh, I remember this, this issue, and I think that it's been resolved. Um, it, it was actually a, a problem with the, the synchronization uh, because uh, when, it, when it has fields that are synchronized, it, uh, when it saves one version, one translation, it automatically saves the other one too. And there, there, there were some conflicts in the, in the way those uh, automatic tasks were generated. Not sure. Uh, well, uh, basically, uh, this is working on my opinion that uh, when you create a file as an adult, it might not be safe with the right language because it's too fast. But I guess it's half language or half half language. So you should check that. Uh, maybe uh, think that this issue has been fixed on this. Maybe you can uh, very well have 
So if I understood the question correctly, it's about using automated translated systems for, uh, for generating gener user-generated content. I, I haven't done anything with this. Uh, um, well, I guess there might be some cases where it would be meaningful. Um, but and at least for user interface, uh, I've seen what, it happen what happens when you use automated services like Google Translate. It's a mess. Don't do it. Uh, maybe with, with user generated content where you actually have full sentences, uh, it might make more sense. But um, yeah, I, I don't know that there's any, any automatic solution that does that. I, it wouldn't be too hard to, to make. Uh, but there the, in the question is well, is, is, are the results good enough? And does it actually help the, the user? If you're you're saying like something that is in their language that they expect it to be right, and so I mean if you see if you see something in your language and it kind of half makes sense, then you're you're not going to trust the website. If it's in another, lo another language and you translate it yourself, like well you know it's a uh, Google Translate doing that. So I would be I would be very careful with the, with the, the um, technically speaking. So uh, the question is about the problem with the uh, constraints and so language that for some things are coded strings if it's if it's English and then for you and the other so the actually might be the the side of language. That would be correct. So uh, well this is a big issue right now with user defined strings. It uh, might get better in uh, uh, to file uh, seven because there's uh, an option to select a third language that might not be the typical language. But uh, anyway, it's a big issue and big mess we will have until we can get this picture into to file for somehow. So there's no solution for this. Just uh, now you can select the uh, third language. Okay. Okay, so we have some more questions. Uh, you can post, uh, uh, sorry, well, uh, this is the last question, and then you can post questions to Twitter or comments or whatever. We will be following up in time for the day. Okay, so. Uh, uh, excuse me, uh, you said past translation. Yeah. Uh, well, for the Drupal standard, is one more module in IPN and that is IPN and path that can link to path, to random path. This should be like the last resource translation for things that you, for nodes, they kind of handle themselves. 
we, we should work with any time. Okay, this is like a, I don't have another way to translate this path, so I use this path as like from the time interface to define that. And that's the only interesting implementation of your now. So, thank you very much. And let's see what we've got. Sorry, so uh, please, if you want to provide feedback about uh, this, this uh, session and take the survey, we would appreciate that. Thank you. Merci. Okay.